Formations, armaments, and inscriptions are now in a small number of kingdoms that are in KVK Season 2. And a big shout out to Relax for getting me this footage today. He's from my Restart Kingdom, but also I believe has an account in a KVK2 Kingdom. So we're going to get a look at all of the details in this footage of how this stuff works. What you just saw built was the State Forum. This is the main building where you get your armaments which make your formation stronger and for those of you that are new to this system i mean i've made a bunch of videos about this so far but to bring you to speed there are formations seven of them the formation gives a little bit of a buff then each formation can have four armaments they also give buffs and each armament can also have inscriptions which are a way to customize more of the buffs that your armaments are giving you. So it's a lot of stats that you're ultimately putting onto commanders. And there is also the ranged formation, which obviously changes the things that you can do with a commander in the field. And I think ranged is probably going to be pretty strong, actually. So if we look now into the state forum, it looks like they're getting a peek here at what it offers you. And at the base level, you can unlock traveling, which is a way to spend AP and get some rewards. At level 10, you unlock dispatches where you can get even better rewards by sending specific commanders. And also, there's a bunch of increases to the number of daily dispatch chances and a major dispatch loop bonus. So I think you're going to want to get your state form to level 16 as fast as possible to get that loop bonus possibility. And at level 25, you stop getting Sage's Testimonies. And now's a good time to talk about Sage's Testimony because the State Forum is going to require a special item that's called the Sage's Testimony in order to upgrade it. You can see here it requires 10 to get to the next upgrade. You can buy them at 10 gems a pop, which, by the way, people have already done the math on the number of these that you need, and it is slightly less. It's like three-fourths as many of these as you needed Books of the Covenant to upgrade your castle to level 25. So you're looking at a grand total of 200,000 gems, but for what it's worth, a part of what the State Forum does is gives you ways to get these Sage's Testimonies. Also, every time you level up your State Forum, you get more Sage's Testimonies. We'll see this throughout this video, but it started at around, I wanna say like 10 Sage's Testimony for doing an upgrade, and they got all the way up to 80 Sage's Testimony just for upgrading your State Forum to the next level. Now, one thing that I was really interested in seeing is whether or not you can still dispatch your troops when you select your Traveler in this screen over here, and it does look like you can still use that commander in the field. Here's a look at the rewards list. I know my body might be blocking this. I might flip it to the other side of the screen, um, but there's a bunch of these different armaments that you equip to your formations that are available here. Now, there is also Sage's Testimonies that are available when you just smash the Spend AP button here. And it does seem like certain commanders are favored for whatever reason on any given day. So if you have that favored commander, there's a possibility of a loop bonus. I couldn't figure out what that loop bonus was. Here we're getting some different things as we smash the AP button. There's a limited number of chances that you get for this per day, by the way, to smash the AP button and just start getting loot rewards here. Uh, armament on the screen. You can lock armaments to make sure you don't accidentally recycle them, which seems really important. I guarantee you a lot of people will accidentally recycle armaments they really want. And we'll talk more about recycling a little bit later on because, yes, you can recycle armaments you don't need in order to get a sort of currency you can use to buy stuff you actually do want, which is good because armaments have three, it seems like, random-ish attributes on them. So some are going to be way better than others, and some are actually just going to be terrible. Like, you're not going to want them at all. So you're just going to want to shed them. Um, so recycling those seems really important. This one has damage to barbarians, mark speed for infantry, and cavalry defense. Now, keep in mind, each of these armaments is specific to a formation, okay? So there's seven formations, and there's four slots for armaments, and um, each armament is specific to one of those slots for a formation. And here now we can get a look at a little bit more of this. We're now selecting formations on this screen. They're choosing Guan Yu here. And if we get a look, um, now we can pick a formation for this commander. Now, you can't use Guan Yu uh, when you're outside of Season of Conquest. Uh, but you can put a formation on them, interestingly enough. 
and you can equip armaments to the formation. Now, something that I thought was really interesting as I was watching this later is um, each of these armaments are actually equipped to the commander. They are equipped to the commander. I, I want to emphasize that. So I thought originally that you equip these things to the formation and then whatever commander you put the formation on, they get the benefit of all the armaments that are on there. But that's actually not the case. And I want to explain that a little further. So um, the same formation, if you put it on uh, two different commanders, you're going to have to choose which one wears the specific armaments. So you could really want to have lots of armaments for each formation because you might need them. We'll show this a little bit more in depth later on, uh, exactly how that works. But I, I, I originally thought that you equip these four armaments to the formation, but, but no, you equip a formation to a commander and then you equip the armaments to the commander, which means... I mean, this is this is like very much equipment 2.0. It's the new equipment system, okay? I, I mean, and that's, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that as a criticism. I'm just mentally prepare yourself for a whole bunch of other stuff that each commander is going to need to have. So if we get a look now at, oh my God, the total number of attributes here, I'll probably take my face off the screen so that you can see everything that's on here. But there are an absolutely shocking number of inscriptions and armaments. Um, there's four armaments for each formation at each rarity. So there's an epic, legendary, and elite armament in each of the spots for each formation. And then epic armaments can have one inscription. Legendary armaments can have multiple inscriptions. That's two. And there's a chance that they get a special ultra powerful inscription potentially that comes with them here's the screen where you can do your recycling you can see that you can reclaim your armaments reclaiming an armament is going to give you a currency that currency you use in a separate shop in order to get specific things that you're interested in so one thing i noticed is that you start with a formation choice chest when you get to this system which basically gives you a random armament from the chosen formation so these seem like a nice way to get an armament for the formation of your choice, but given that the attributes are random, it seems, <clears throat> I mean, this is just so much RNG in actually getting one of these formations to be on point. Uh, you can see here they got 2% damage to barbarians, 1.6% march speed for archers, and another stat on there. Um, and, and if you look at these, the, the Fleur de Lis here, there's two of them. It's for the same formation, and they have different attribute bonuses on here. So I'm inclined to believe that the attributes are all random. It is possible that the random uh, that the attribute bonuses aren't completely random. So in other words, it could be that there's a better chance of getting certain attributes. Um, I don't know. Uh, if we get a look at the travel section here, we smash the button again, get a little bit of gold. Okay, um, not all that exciting. You look at the rewards list, and then the probability overview is kind of interesting. You can see here there's a 2% chance of getting the legendary armaments, 7.5% of the epic armaments, 35% of the elites, and those are the main things that you want. It Also, there's like an 8% chance of getting some Sage's testimonies, which are going to be pretty good for free-to-play players and low spenders who don't want to crank out a ton of gems. Keep in mind that if you just wait for a more than gems event, which I know we just had, which is a little bit annoying, but if you wait for a more than gems event, that would be a really good time to go and buy this stuff up. But I do think using like 10,000 gems, if you have them, to rush to level 16 for this building, if you can swing it, would absolutely be worth doing for the major loot bonus chance. I don't know what that major loot is, but major loot, you have my attention, okay? 5%, a 0.5% uh, chance, 10,000 gem cost for that. I mean, okay, there's other things that you get as you go. Also, by the way, this seal of war is amazing. 1.8% uh, one, 1 infantry defense, 1% infantry attack, and an all damage boost is like exactly what you want. You want basically all the stats for one troop type. Like that's exactly where you want to be. So actually that was a really, really good pull there. Now it's only a blue one. You really need the epics. You really need the legendaries, but whatever. If we get a look and switch the 
commander here, it looks like the probabilities are the same, even though it's not one of those top tier, what, are, what do they call it here? Fearless champions. It's, it's one of the other commanders. The probabilities seem the same. So I don't know what this fearless champion bonus is. It doesn't seem to list it anywhere. Um, so if anybody figures that out, definitely leave a comment down below. Uh, that's going to be interesting to get a look at. So now that this building is leveled up a bit more, you can go to the dispatch section. At level 10, you unlock the dispatch section. But again, level 16 is where you get that major uh, loot chance. So at the start, they're giving us a really nice quest to do here, the Crystal Mines. This has a potential legendary inscription reward, which is pretty exciting. And you've got to dispatch commanders that meet certain requirements. Now, one thing that I was really curious about is whether or not you can still use the commander in the field after you dispatch them. And the answer is yes. So you don't have to worry about um, dispatching a commander here and then not being able to use them. You can use them. Um, so you have to fulfill all the requirements that are here. They want two leadership commanders, two expertise commanders, and all the commanders have to be level 20 plus. That's actually pretty easy to accomplish if you you know are in KVK season two and beyond. There's definitely some value to having multiple leveled up commanders here, but I wouldn't start leveling up irrelevant commanders just to fulfill this because although, you know, they're throwing some uh, legendary commanders on the screen for now, you can just use all epic commanders and that seems to be just fine. I probably will be pushing the auto team up button a lot for this because I mean, look, if you have multiple accounts, at some point it's going to take a while to do all the stuff at reset anyways. So yeah, just going in, teaming these up really fast smash the dispatch button, you spend some AP. It's worth AP, no question about it, to get these rewards, especially if you've been playing the game for a while. Yeah, you just fire this off and uh, start getting those rewards as fast as possible because there are basically, a, it looks like a set series of quests every day, and those quests reset at reset. That's zero UTC. So it seems like they give you a full set of quests, you pick which ones you want to go and do, and I don't think they replace them when you complete them. I don't know for sure if that's the case, if completing this one will, you know, replace it with a different quest. I don't think that's the case. Um, so I'll have to get that information as soon as we've actually had enough time to finish some of these dispatch quests. Um, if they do replace quests after you finish other ones, then you might want to kind of sandbag a little bit and, you know, knock out the best ones and then see if you get better ones. But I suspect, you can see in the upper left here, there's a timer for when it resets. I suspect that you just get all your quests for that 24-hour window. You're going to want to pick and choose based on the rewards that are here. And you get a total number of dispatch chances related to the level of your state forum. That's displayed in the upper right. So you can only do, in this account, five of these. And that's because the state forum is at level 16. Now, once you've done a number of these dispatch quests, you can get a special reward. And that special reward is random, uh, but it could be epic, it could be legendary, or you could, it looks like, get some of the uh, things you need to upgrade the state forum. Eh, you know, not the best, not the best pull, but if you're free to play, that's not so bad. Um, and it does say all of the rules here on the screen, cost action points, uh, when the commander fulfills all dispatch requirements, you can begin. No more dispatch chances can be gained over a certain daily limit. Uh, if you have no chances left, that's it. The number of daily chances you have are restored to the maximum limit at midnight. Uh, so that's reset every day. Complete 15 dispatches to get the dispatch commendation containing a valuable random armament. Now at your courier station is where you can actually do the recycling function with your armaments. Um, and this is where you can exchange for some goodies. Also, there's a superior exchange for inscriptions. And these are the stronger inscriptions, it would seem. Now, look, uh, there's actually a bunch of inscriptions that are lootable from this inscription shard chest, but the uh, chase item, it seems like for me, is these specific inscriptions that you can get, and they seem really strong. This one increases troop skill damage by 5%, increases normal attack damage by 3%, up to 12% to target troops per 20% of troops lost. So as you're losing troops, you do more damage. Increase troops normal attack damage resistance by 3.5%. Troops deal 8%. I think that was more normal attack damage. Increase troops skill damage resistance by 5%. So, you know, I don't know if I'm going to read all of these out loud here, um, but these seem really powerful and they are specific to individual formations. 
Troops gain 5% resistance to counterattack damage. When a friendly target other than yourself receives a buff, the target receiving the buff immediately gains 25 rage? Hello? That seems really insane. So there, it does seem like there's going to be some options for commanders like Trajan to really pop off. Like Trajan-Mulan combo could be back with a vengeance or, I mean, yeah, no, Trajan-Mulan actually, just lots of buffing um, could be a thing. Uh, troops receive a 5% boost to shields, increase all troop damage dealt uh, by, I think it's 3% when you're shielded, 2% when you're not. Uh, gold gathering, and then march speed increased by 50% upon departing structures for 10 seconds. Okay, that's for the march speed formation, by the way, which is why that kind of makes some sense. So, yeah, uh, these inscriptions are really powerful, and we'll go over all of the inscriptions in just a bit here. This, by the way, is where we figured out that armaments are equipped to the commander, not, not exactly to the formation. So let me explain that a little bit. Each armament can only be equipped to a certain formation. But you need to have that formation on the commander, and then that armament can be equipped to that formation and that commander. So you have to remove it from the one commander, which you can see on the screen here, to put it on another one, which is definitely interesting. I did not realize that this was going to work that way. I suppose in some ways, like, you can do a lot more customization this way. But this is going to be just an astonishing amount of collecting. This is why I was saying it's kind of like equipment 2.0, but, like, really, really complicated. So, like, yes, if you spend the time really going off the deep end on this stuff, um, you can get a really solid advantage. But it's going to be a lot, a lot of things to collect and micro-optimize to use your commander optimally. So for field, maybe this is less of a big deal. For rally and garrison, this is really big for getting like the right stuff sorted out. And I do worry a little bit about the amount of re-equipping you need to do for commanders for like open field versus garrison versus rally. I, I don't want to be, I don't know, too concerned about that just yet, but already equipment swapping is a little bit of a pain. And then you also need to swap the formation stuff too. It's just starting to be a, like, you know, I mean, there's a lot to manage. So here we can get a look at all of the inscriptions. And I'll try to go through this pretty quickly because there's just a ton here. Um, but each specific armament can have specific inscriptions. And some of them can be used across different armaments multiple times. So a bunch of armaments, I think, have this war cry buff or well clad. Um, you know, inscription, like these inscriptions, keep in mind, are on top of the random attributes. So a bunch of these are going to be flashing on the screen now. Um, I'll read some of them out loud because there's just like a lot. I mean, I think they said like a hundred plus of these different inscriptions that are available. But I, I want you to take note of for the legendary armaments that there's also an orange colored inscription. And I think that's the special inscription that either you unlock with the, with the shop or you can get potentially when you pull the item um, and, and get the item originally. It might come with that inscription. Also, they mentioned, by the way, um, in a patch note that there's going to be access to some special inscriptions that you get from KVK. So that might be where you get some of these. Uh, but whoa, the amount of customization here, right? You You've got what formation is it? You've got what armament is it? What three attributes does it have? And then also for the legendaries, what two inscriptions do you put onto there? So it's going to be a lot of customization. Instead of reading through all this stuff, what I'm going to do is put this footage at the end of the video where they tap through each of these different inscriptions. And so you can see them for yourself. So I'm not going to try to read them out loud and go through every single one of them. Um, but they'll be there at the end of the video. And there are, are of course, timestamps. So you can jump to that if you'd like. Needless to say, these are, like, really powerful. Now we're going to go take the ranged formation for a spin. And it, honestly, I think there's a lot of potential here for this to be powerful. I do think that I, I just, I, I'm having... A lot of difficulty in understanding how I'm going to manage six other marches and one or two or even three marches or, or all my marches trying to do ranged. 
seems really weird. Um, so, you know, the way that endgame players play the game is, I mean, they try to run around with their seven marches, hit the same thing. It's just going to be really hard to micro marches uh, like you see here. So you need to set up a tower to do your ranged attacks. Setting up the tower moves that march over. Then there is a timer for actually building it. It's a 10 second build. Um, and then once you convert into that formation, or I guess I should say into that, you know, the, the completed ranged attack mode, I, I don't know, uh, the turret, now you can attack. So you can see I've got a range here. I can hit the barb if I want. I select the march that's already here and boom, you can do that attack. Um, it's doing an attack every second, like you would expect. I am building up rage in this instance, or they're building up rage in this instance. And when you leave this mode, you do actually have a five second window where you disembark from the, the mode and then you instantly do your skill damage, which is kind of cool. So there is a strategy to be had here where you can attack at range, build up rage. And if the enemy walks up to you, um, you at the right moment, leave the range attack mode and you pop them with skill damage. That to me feels like the most skillful way you could do this. But keep in mind, to build one of these turrets, there can't be anything else in the footprint on the ground. Not a city, not another player, not a gold node, whatever. So, like, in a busy fight, it's just going to be really hard. Like, honestly, just a pain in the ass to have a bunch of people set up their turrets to try to arrange an ambush. Like, you'd have to set up for an ambush well in advance of the enemy actually being there. Because once they're sort of rushing down your gate, it's going to be really difficult to scramble around and move people and get in a position to do, I don't know, this range setup. But pass openings, oh my god, let me tell you what pass openings are going to look like with ranged attacks. You're going to see just, I think, a cone of all of these towers set up to do ranged attacks. That's my suspicion, okay? That's my guess here. Um, this part's going to showcase to us, by the way, the fact that you can disembark and instantly do a skill attack, which is kind of cool. So uh, they hit the barb here. And then in just a second, you're going to see the rage bar goes up. Then when you disembark, it's a five second timer. You stop doing your normal attacks, but you still deal counter attacks when you're disembarking. So you'll see that in just a second that the damage goes down pretty substantially. Um, very substantially, in fact. It was 6,000, now it's down to 2,000. And then, boom, you can see the skill attack did happen. Skill damage is on the screen. Wow. So, I mean, obviously, a lot to take in here. If you found today's video helpful, do me a huge favor. Throw a like on here and subscribe to the channel. What I'm going to have rolling for the end of this video is just the tap through on a bunch of the different inscriptions that are available. Um, I think it's going to cover most of them, but there's so dang many, it would just take forever to tap on every single one. But this will give you a pretty good idea of what these can do. You can always pause the video to take a little more time to read any of them or scroll back and forth.